All right, everyone. Uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, splice site mutations, um, which is something that you're going to be uh, encountering in uh, FTM1. Um, so it basically has to do with um, mRNA, and it's talking about uh, pro post transcriptional modification. So basically, before you have post transcriptional modification, um, you're going to have a sequence, and then basically there's going to be splice sites that are going to be put into it to make the sequence either longer, or shorter, or depending on uh, what you're looking at and what they give you in the uh, question. Um, so anyways, uh, basically the uh, this is actually not that difficult. Um, there's just a couple things you have to remember. They actually end up being kind of easy points on the exam if you can remember them. Um, but we're just going to break it down uh, step by step and just look at um, what you're kind of looking for with each of these scenarios. Um, so the first thing is we want to kind of uh, make sure that we know the difference between an exon and an intron, right? Uh, so you've probably done this already in undergrad and everything, but um, an exon is basically a part of an mRNA transcript that you want to keep, right? So you want to keep the exons. Those are the parts that you actually need, right? Um, but then the introns, uh, for the most part, are parts that you want to get rid of. So the way that I like to think of it is I like to think of introns as sort of intruders. Um, so you want to kick the intruders out, right? So basically, uh, you want to splice out all of the introns. Um, unless they give you a situation um, in which the splice sites are changed up and kind of manipulated and uh, those are usually due to mutations and we'll take a look at that. Um, but let's first of all start out with the normal. So for these, uh, for these questions what you're probably going to get is you're going to get something that looks like this. And basically what that's saying is here you have three exons, exon number one, exon number two, and exon number three, and then in between them you're going to have uh, two introns. So intron number one is this segment right here. Intron number two is going to be this segment right here. And then basically uh, you have to look at the um, amino acid sequence to sort of be able to tell, or, or the the nucleotide sequence to sort of, nucleotide sequence, sorry, to sort of be able to tell um, uh, where your splice donor and your splice acceptor sites are going to be. So basically for the splice do donor and acceptor sites, um, the, uh, the sequence is always going to be the same. For the donor site, it's always going to be GU, okay? And for the acceptor site, it's always going to be AG. The easiest way to remember this is to think of it this way. With this super easy mnemonic, it's GU is give you, right? And then AG is a gift. So if you think about it with that mnemonic, it's basically the donor site will give you, and then the acceptor site will receive a gift. So it's give you a gift, G-U-A-G, -G, donor, acceptor. If you can keep that straight, that's really all you need to know. You just gotta like look down the sequence and see where the, the, the spots are. Usually they won't even like make you look through a actual sequence. They might give you something like this and a couple other variations of it and tell you, like ask you which one's correct. Um, but anyways, so basically what happens is um, those are your donor and acceptor sites. So every time you see a donor site, Basically what you should be doing in your head and what you should be thinking is making a splice. I'm making a splice at that site right there. So every time you see a donor site, you're just gonna go ahead and make a splice. However, in order to complete that splice, the next site that you have to encounter is gonna have to be an acceptor site. It can't be another donor site. It can't be, uh, it's basically it's gotta be an acceptor site in order for you to, um, to make uh, the next splice. So the next splice that you're looking for, you're looking for an acceptor site, which is right here. Then you go down and you look for your next donor site, which is right there, at your GU, give you, and then your next acceptor site is going to be right there at a gift. And you've basically set it up so that you can now solve the problem. So basically, they're going to ask you, what is this end result going to look like after you take out all the splices and everything like that? Well, basically anything in between the donor and the acceptor site is going to be spliced out, like you're going to get rid of it. So if you're looking at it down here, what you're, going, what you're going to do is you're going to take out this portion right here in between the donor and the acceptor, and then this portion right here in between the donor and the acceptor, and you're going to be left with this sequence right there, is what you're going to be looking at. And that is the normal, right? However, there's a couple of different ways that they can, uh, they can manipulate this, and we're going to take a look at that right now. All right, so for the first example, let's, took it, let's take a look at the uh, situation, and you don't have to write these down right now. I'm gonna put them in the description box, so just take a look at that. Um, let's take a uh, look at an example in which you have a mutation at intron one, okay, so that's right here, 
right? At the splice acceptor site. Okay, so that's gonna be right there. So anytime they say a mutation at a site, what they most likely mean, unless they say we've put in a new uh, splice site, a, a mutation at a specific site is gonna mean that that site's been taken out. So in this case, let's say the acceptor site is basically taken out and they've replaced it with something like AC, they might give you something else, right? So basically they'll give you something that's not AG, right? So. Let's go ahead and see how that's gonna change up our uh, sequence down here. So that was our normal, right? And let's see how it's gonna, uh, basically this new site is, or the, the site being taken out is gonna uh, change up our answer. So, as we said, every time that you see a donor site, you wanna like mentally make a cut, a, a physical splice in your head. So here, this donor site is all right. We just, we're just gonna go ahead and just make a, a splice right there. The next donor site, however, or sorry, the next acceptor site, however, is taken out. So, can you follow a donor site with another donor site? No, a donor site has to fall uh, has to have an acceptor site following it. So, what you actually have to do is you actually have to go over to the next acceptor site, which is this one right here, to make your next splice. So, your first splice was at your donor site, right? And a donor site has to be followed by an acceptor site. So your next splice is gonna be at the next available acceptor site, which is that, because this one was taken out. So basically now what you're gonna get as your answer, since everything in between the splice site, right, in between the donor and the acceptor is all taken out, what your answer that you're gonna be left with is, is gonna be, that right there. So it's gonna be E1 and E3. So exon one and exon three and everything in between that is all gonna be spliced out. So basically, what does that mean as far as like um, your, uh, your transcript? Did it get longer, did it get shorter? Well, in this case it got shorter, right? Because you took out more material. And that's something that they might present to you on the exam as well as far as like answer choices. They might, they might give you the correct sequence, like they might give you this, but then it might say longer or shorter. You kinda of have to just determine it which is honestly really easy. If you just use this method, you'll get it right. It's super, super easy. Don't worry about it too much. Um, just make sure you have this method down. Um, so the next thing that we wanna look at uh, is another example. We're gonna look at a mutation. Let's go ahead and draw this again. Really quick. All right, so here's your exon one, exon two, exon three, and here's your intron one and intron two. Um, and let's go ahead and do this example where they give you a mutation that's within, all right? So this time it's within intron one. And what they're doing to intron one is they're gonna be adding within intron one a new splice acceptor site, okay? So they're adding a new acceptor site, so AG, a gift, which is a new acceptor site. But that doesn't mean that this one went away, right? You still have that acceptor site. You still have this donor site. You still have this donor site right here, give you. And then right here, we have a gift as well. But let's see how this new, new site right here is gonna switch up our answer now. So we said that every time you see a donor site, you wanna physically make a cut, right? So right here, we got a donor site. We're gonna physically make a cut. That's the first splice. The next splice has to be an, an acceptor site, right? Because every time you have a donor site, it's gotta be followed by an acceptor site. So we're gonna look for the next available acceptor site, which is actually now right here, right? Now what are we gonna do? Well, we're just gonna look for the next donor site. Where's the next donor site? Is it right there? No, that's an acceptor site. We're gonna skip over this guy, go straight to here, which is your next donor site, make your next splice, and then the next splice is gonna be followed by an acceptor site which is gonna be right there. So it's gonna go donor, acceptor, donor, acceptor, just like we did the first time around as well. The difference now though, is whenever you get your final answer, it's gonna look like this. Okay. So basically what you got here is this little snippet right here. Now, where did this guy come from? 
Well, this was because of the acceptor site getting moved up uh, earlier, right? So where this site actually came from was this over here. This little segment over here. Because since this acceptor site got cut, any, everything between the donor and the acceptor gets spliced out, right? And then everything that's not within that segment is going to retain. It's going to stay, right? So this segment basically got kept in. And then you went to the next donor site, made a splice, made an acceptor site splice, spliced everything out in between the two, and you end, and you end up with this, right? So it's going to be a longer segment now. Um, and I just said it. Yeah, so it's going to be a longer mRNA segment uh, as opposed to your original one, which would be missing this little segment right there. All right, let's do one more example and call it a day. So the last one that we're going to look at is going to be a mutation. Let's draw this real quick. So this is going to be E1, E2, E3 the same way. And honestly, they're probably not going to give you anything more than like three or four segments. Um, so you don't really have to worry about that. Um, and, on, and if they do, it doesn't really matter. It's, it's not very hard. Um, so anyway, so the next thing we're going to be looking at is a mutation at intron 2 at the splice donor site. So basically, anytime you just see a mutation at the site, um, and they're not saying that they're putting something else in new, at the donor site of, of, uh, of sorry, of intron, yeah, intron 2, they put a mutation, so that basically means they just took it out. So this donor site is now gone, okay? So let's go ahead and just work through it and let's see what happens. So here is your first donor site. As always, we just made the first splice, right? Your next acceptor site is gonna be right here. We made the next splice, and then your next donor site is nowhere, right? There is no next donor site. So you're looking at it, and you you might, if you get stuck on the exam, you're thinking, wait, what do I do now? Well, let's see, I made the donor site splice, the acceptor site splice, right? And then the next thing that's got to follow has got to be another donor site, right? But there is no next donor site. So what do you do? You literally just keep it all. You There's nothing else to splice. So basically, everything else is just left in that, and uh, that's your that's going to be your answer. So what you're going to look at, as far as your answer choices, the correct one will look like this, because intron 2 will actually be kept in since the last donor site and acceptor site pair that you see is right here. That Everything right here gets spliced out, but there is nothing else. There's nothing else to work with. And don't overthink it. Don't think, oh, maybe down the line there might be something. No. If they don't give it to you, there's nothing else to work with. That's your final answer, and that's it. So um, honestly, these aren't too hard. Um, this is as hard as, as it's going to get with this. And it, it, it's just um, basically just if you can memorize the, uh, the net, like the give you a gift um, and the splice sites and how the different sort of um, wording for this might be and how like they might present it. That's all you really need to know and that's pretty much it with this. Um, but anyways, yeah, hopefully that was helpful. Thanks guys.